your shows at the VU, right? Yeah, yeah. So who are your who's your crew, Rachel? Like in what sense for the virtual or just in general? No, no. Like who oh. who do you consider your crew when it comes to the like Esther Koo? Like, who do you go to? <laughs> no, it's Esther Koo's birthday today. She <laughs> talked to her today. She of course said, uh, you know, she wants you to call her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Esther Koo. <laughs> She wants me to call her? Yeah, you know, she's in love with you. Oh, my God. We should call <laughs> yeah. her on the show. Oh, she'd be so happy. It is her birthday today. No, but then, then my wife would get mad. Oh, she yeah. Right. Listen okay. to we would assume she would. Just Cows, she loves Just Cows, so if she hears right. Just Cows doing the show, <clears throat> she might have to listen. Anyway, Esther Koo's a fraud. <laughs> she's, I don't even know if she's Asian at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but I she agree. still looks good. No, she's so full of shit. She's like, I'm so, I'm a dirty slut. It's all I'm from Pakistan. It's all Sarah's <laughs> fault. Like, I'm a dirty whore. I'll fucking suck anybody. Can I get a spot? And then she's had the same boyfriend for like tw- uh, 14 years or something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, a scam. Well, you're right. Yeah. The, Sarah probably started that where all these girls were like, this is the way I'm going to be. That's definitely true. She did. I mean, fucking Amy Schimmer's like, I like cock and food. I yeah. I'll put a- everything in my mouth. She was like the like, Mandalorian. This is the way. <laughs> Here's a bunch of specials. Here's a bunch of. Spe- I mean, like I Amy. I always thought Amy was a good comic, but it's like still Sarah was like Sarah was like, just pretend you're a whore, and you know, I mean, is Sarah a whore? She just had sex with a lot of guys. I don't think she was like consider herself like, well, like no and that's the thing it's you know it's a complete she, double she, standard she did what everybody else was doing which yeah, was every girl. dude it's bad she rap did, yeah if jay moore did that people wouldn't say he was gay <laughs> <laughs> it's come up before let's put Is the clip right? on let's play yeah, the, clip the clip of sarah okay. talking right, about right. it because i think sarah go. genuinely thinks she was in love <clears> with all <throat> these guys you know i think she was i think that's the kind oh. of thing she would do all the guys she dated. Yeah. Well, we'll talk in a second. Let's go to the I clip. I my virginity at 19 to another comedian. I was already a comedian. Oh. I was so in love with him. But he didn't, I mean, he was 30. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's wow. like, that's why. The what, first dude now, you had sex with was 30? Yeah. This is like retarded Chrissy Mayer. How do you know it was your first time? I, I thought that? it was great. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, this is Play, sex. Go back, like, Adam. Oh, my God. And then he pulled when back I the talk, sheets and there was blood. Adam oh never God. worked. It's, Adam never worked for Red Bar. When Spoiler I talk, alert. you got. No, I, did, I didn't know you were gonna like uh, comment. I'll pause. No, it I you didn't. Talk. Go ahead. I, I wasn't gonna. But this. Oh, okay. This, this, Go ahead. This interviewer is so stupid. She's horrible. But, Where did she get an interview with Sarah? I don't she- know. But she's at Sarah's house. She has like a bad accent. She's got those big like milky thighs, which are disgusting. Look, look how big her thighs that you can see. Imagine how the f- high, higher up you get. She's just well, maybe dumb. Maybe she's, she's big like, in Australia or something. Yeah. yeah, but she's got a lazy accent, and she just asks dumb questions. Yeah, it's a ahead. horrible question. She's a horrible interviewer. Go ahead. Is like, this, this on Compound sex? Media? I was like, oh my god! And then he pulled back the sheets, and there was blood. Well, you got to go back further. My heart stopped, and I was like, oh my god! And then he pulled back the sheets. I thought yeah. it was great. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, this is sex. I was like, oh my god! And then Start he pulled the back the sheets, and there. You want to go to the beginning of the clip? Yeah, it's like, it goes back. JFK assassination. Yeah, it's, it's only uh, yeah, it's only <laughs> know, two it's minutes. Short. All right, just play the it's whole. It's kind of short. Yeah. I lost my virginity at nineteen to another comedian. I was already a comedian. Oh. I was so in love with him, but he didn't. I mean, he was thirty. You know what I mean? So it's wow. like that's the why first dude now, you had sex with was thirty. Yeah, he was good. Wait, she sounds South African. Whatever she is, South it's a African? stupid question. What is that? The first guy you ever was 30? <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of question is that? Is that a big they, they get worse. Go ahead. How do you know? No, at least you I, you I thought it was, <laughs> it was great. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, this is sex. I was like, oh my God. And then he pulled back the sheets and there was blood. <gasps> and like my heart stopped and I was like, that came from you. He's like, oh, no, it didn't. But anyway, um, Sarah. I still love, like, he's, I know him still, you know. But anyway, um, oh. my point was, I Plug was the website. with him. I, he was, I was <laughs> nothing to him, you know what I mean? Like, that, you know, now as I'm Maybe older and I have friends, you know, that age, that's why a older guy dates a 19-year-old, because yeah. he doesn't want to settle down or be in a relationship. Right. But anyway, um, so he dumped me, you know, and I was... <clears throat> 
so devastated. I thought I'd never fall in love again because I had never felt that way before, you know. I was, like, so madly in love. And my mom, I remember my mom said something that struck me so deeply. She said, don't let this experience keep you from falling in love again. Like, don't let it make you build a wall because mm -hmm. as much pain as you feel now, like, love is worth it. It's worth taking a chance that you you might feel pain. That's beautiful advice. Yeah, Shut up. I was shocked. You no, know, I'm getting pissed I off. Really I hate like, that interviewer. Oh, yeah. You Have know. you been able to do that? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, I've been in love since I lost my virginity with Kevin. <laughs> Ooh. You mentioned your name. I mean, can, can you, the interviewer was like, so, so, yeah, she didn't, she never fell in love again. She's still waiting. It's just. <laughs> right. Why, why did you ask, why did you ask, who's number two? You know, let's get right. to these questions, you know? Yeah, she's just it's such a dumb, I think in other countries, it, like, if you volunteer for show business, they just, it's like, it's like when you, we, when I used to watch Tom Snyder, I'm like, he was so bad. I think nobody wanted to be in show business back then. So that's why they put him I on think so like, late. Yeah, I think in these other countries, she's like, I'll be in show business. And they're like, okay, you're an idiot. You have you have uh, milky thighs. Uh, yeah. Let's put you on yeah. TV. But uh, Well, there's an example like, of somebody so, who probably blew somebody to get that. Yeah, job. but she's like, so so what, what terrific advice. Wow, that's amazing advice. Yeah, don't let some fucking bitter 30-year-old hold you back. Uh, you know, fuck all his friends. And then and then move up to move up to the Gary Shandling level, <laughs> and then uh, you know maybe get a talk show host to finger you. And, uh, uh, so and Kyle just, Donegan. Oh, it's just it's just so it's it's such a dumb interview. But Sarah, to to her credit, she never like said like what I would have been like no I'm still waiting. It's been thirty years, but I'm still waiting for someone else to sweep uh, me off my feet. I'll tell you something else <laughs> to her credit. She's 50. She looks unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, I think that was an old interview, though, right? No, that's her new house. It is? Yeah, so I'm going to say that interview is very recent. Oh, then she does. Wow. Have, she it looks good. Up. Well, yeah, she what, looks that's amazing. That's what if you don't have any kids. <clears throat> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm taking from that. She really That's her new house? She moved, she moved to a house or moved to a yeah. different apartment? She moved to a house. Wow, someone's doing well. Yeah. <laughs> You think? Well, look, she lived in an apartment all this time. I know. I'm joking. That's why yeah. she's like 50. She's but I'll tell you, like, the I'm best on part. the 18th floor. <laughs> Wait, let, she can't have I, her parties I, anymore yeah. at her at her complex. The what? You can't have her summer parties now because she doesn't have that. Yeah, uh, no, I guess not. Um, but wait, I have to tell the. Uh, I don't know whether you. Well, you couldn't have told it this way, but uh, you know, my favorite story is when I have told Kevin this before, and I probably told it on the podcast before. But when she was writing her book. It's my favorite thing about Kevin Brennan. This is why I will always love him, no matter what he does. <laughs> play um, he will always. I will. Right, always. right. She uh, no. she was writing her book, and she needed to have Kevin's permission, uh, you know, to put it in that you know here is the guy I lost my virginity to, and it's just funny because remember the way they broke up was she was like, uh, "Hey, I think I'm in love with you. I want you to be my boyfriend." He goes, "I'm not your boyfriend, you dumb cunt." You know, like, and uh, and that's pretty much the way, you know, he, he treated her, but he treated everybody that way, which is Aww. why she's still okay to be, you know, friends with him. <laughs> well, I love him, Mom. I love him, Mom. Right, right. But it's like, shut up, you dumb cunt. So 30 <laughs> years later, she writes him an email and says, do you mind if I talk about this in the book? And and quite frankly, you'd think Kevin could also use the publicity at that point. He goes, I don't care what you do, you dumb cunt. <laughs> and, like, yeah. and I was like, well, what did you expect? He was going to say, you got to you got to respect that. I think <laughs> I great callback. Care. I think I was just 30 joking. Years later, whatever. Yeah, you got to be consistent. That's, That's why Larry, I like Kevin. That's how Larry King made it. If he was different when I met him, I would hate him. Right. <laughs> I'm getting in. Yeah. I'm <laughs> really getting in. <laughs> Run riot. So, so where'd Sarah, why'd Sarah move? She got a. a uh, I can tell you exactly up. why. Uh, it's because of the pandemic. She was um, here, you know, because her play was supposed to open. Oh, yeah. And um, she was living in this like Airbnb and it was, she liked it. It was like a lot of sunlight and everything. And she went back to her, you know, apartment where it was, didn't really get a lot of sunlight. And she's like, I, I can't, I, I can't take it. So I'm going to, I got to move where there's more sunlight. That's yeah, her apartment yeah. wasn't very impressive. Well, she loved it though. 
you know, she didn't she care. Was, but then I guess when she stayed somewhere else for a period of time, she was like, okay, now I don't like my apartment. She never thought, cause it was fun. It was a nice apartment. You know, it was a good place. It's like a bachelor pad. Yeah. And that's, you know, she's, she's like a dude, you know, <laughs> she's, she likes having a bachelor pad. She doesn't like to commit to, to anything. And, you know, that's exactly she, what it was. But she lived in West Hollywood still? Where she moved now? Yeah. I don't know where the place is. Oh, uh, but that, you know, that's, but she place. still lives in California. I mean, in with that LA. lady, with the lady that was interviewing her, that was, that's her new apartment. I, I'm guessing <laughs> I, it looked cause it didn't look like her old one. I think it's the new one. I just saw some. Yeah, she, but maybe she was at the lady's apartment. I don't think so. I think that's her couch. It just seemed like it was. Why? It seemed like it was a long. It was, <laughs> I, I, there I was. was I, think there was fo- I think there was a photo. I think there was a. I think there was a photograph of her old dog on the uh, on the counter. Uh, that's why I thought it was her apartment or uh, her house. Maybe you're Kevin, right. you should call her right now. Sarah wouldn't. The last time Sarah responded to me was, uh, she said, "You guys aren't friends about me and Jeff Ross." <laughs> <laughs> my virginity at 19 to another comedian. I was already a comedian. I was so in love with him. But he didn't, I mean, he was 30. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's why. The first dude you had sex with was 30? I hope it was good. How do you know it was your first time? I thought it was great. I couldn't (laughs) believe it. I was like, this is sex. I was like, oh my God. And then he pulled back the sheets and there was blood. (gasps) And like my heart stopped and I was like, that came from you. He's like, no, it didn't. But anyway, um, I still love, like, he's, I know him still, you know. But anyway, um, my point was I was madly in love with him. I, he was, I was nothing to him, you know what I mean? Like, that, you know, now as I'm Maybe older and I have friends, you know, that age, that's why a older guy dates a 19-year-old, because yeah. he just wants to settle down or be in a relationship. Right. But anyway, um, so he dumped me, you know, and I was so devastated i thought i'd never fall in love again because i had never felt that way before you know i was like so madly in love and my mom i remember my mom said something that struck me so deeply she said don't let this experience keep you from falling in love again like don't let it make you build a wall because as much pain as you feel now like love is worth it it's worth taking a chance that you you might feel pain. That's beautiful advice. Yeah, I was shocked. I remember thinking like, oh, yeah. You Have know? you been able to do that? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, I've been in love since I lost my virginity with Kevin. <laughs> yeah, she didn't like the fact that you were just like regular off stage. She liked the fact that you were like decisive and... <laughs> Isn't that funny? I was like, what? I, I could be a dick. Just tell me. Like, I thought I thought they want behind the scenes. I thought they wanted you to be nice. But, you know, whatever. I know what you mean. I dated a girl that was really mean and nasty you know, several times. And then one time she turned around and she says, you know, I'm really falling for you. And I'm like, what the hell is this? This is way out of character. It's supposed I'm to be kind. mean and nasty to me. Why don't you be a man? I liked it better that way. When she would say that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You don't want them too fucking mushy. Kevin, did you see that clip on online with uh, Neil and Jay Moore talking about you in a pitch meeting? I did. I did. Where was where was that? Yeah. Where, where is that? I need to see that immediately. <laughs> it was yeah. It was on Twitter a while back. I remember seeing. No, that I just too. somebody just sent it to me, or or it uh, was. Uh, I think it was on Dislabeled. Is it new? Like Ooh, them now or years ago? Hold on, hold on. No, it was it was. Uh, it was. Yeah, Adam. Uh, if you could find it, you got to see. Right it. After I, it was right after I worked with Norm. Oh, so this is years ago. It was like uh, probably yeah, twenty yeah, I guess almost ten years ago now because they were talking when about Jay that. was thin and pretty, right? And then uh, yeah, and he was then, talking about you, you guys like selling shows or something together. Yeah, and you, yeah, you were like Neil. you're miserable being like in the- <laughs> miserable in a pitch meeting, and Neil <laughs> yes. had to come with the charisma, and then. Right. Then, yeah, you, uh, know you, you know, if you know, you're in trouble, if Neil. If you're relying on Neil for charisma. <laughs> now what he, happened was I had a. And you left, and he said, you, you walked out of the meeting, and you looked at Neil, and you're like, nice job, Sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we, we, the show, I think the show was already sold, so I was like, why is Neil trying so hard mm-hmm. to sold the show? <laughs> what happened was, I, at, I know one of the meetings, I had like a water bottle like this, and I don't know if we were waiting for somebody, or we were like, but I put my head down on the water bottle, like just resting my head on the water mm. bottle. Mm. 
just you know, I didn't think it was a big deal. I did it all the time at Boston Comedy Club. So anyway, I would just I put my head down, and then uh, after the meeting, Neil's like, "What the fuck was that?" I go, "What the fuck was what?" He goes, "You put your head on a water bottle." Yeah, it was just resting my head, or but you know, maybe he's got a point, but whatever. I I, I thought I was easy going. You're not. You're a troublemaker. You're like Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> You're an instigator. <laughs> but we can't find it. I, I just. Oh no! I think I think I found it. I think I found it. I just it. found the whole thing last <laughs> night. Yeah. No, I found it. Uh, it's actually it actually says "Good Job Sparkles" right in the title. Hold on. Wow. <laughs> hold on. Yeah. Play it. Hold on, somebody hold on. tells you that, and then it turns out he actually said it. You know, like, <laughs> said, like, like, oh yeah, you said that live, but then right. it turns out it's true. Okay, let's see. Oh. And your brother, I want to touch on real quick. You come from a real funny family. Danny was a good friend for a while. We just fell out of touch, but I, I really love Danny. I haven't he I haven't talked to him in a long time. Is that because <clears throat> of family issues or just yeah. felt just, just oh. family shit? Yeah. Hiya Danny. Yeah. He's just whatever. And Kevin was doing warm up on Norm's sports show, which inexplicably canceled so you yeah. can squeeze in more reruns of everything else on your net. Yeah. I need to see a cartoon. Thanks. Yeah. You know why I don't watch cartoons? Because I'm fucking forty. I right, yeah. too long. I watch it's cartoons. Long. When yeah, this is like eight minutes. So yeah. I don't know. It's too I cut long. to the uh, towards the end because that's when it is. Oh, okay. The right. gist oh. of it is that right, ninety nine right. pitching a show for Kevin. Right, Here okay. We go. Okay. So Kevin's sitting in the room, just fucking in the pitch, <laughs> moping, and I'm fucking turning on the charm and fucking <laughs> see his face. Yeah, just what? moping. Yeah, well, I don't know. Moping, like, I don't want to fucking ask Neil. I don't know. And uh, so you I'm being charming. <laughs> I'm being charming, engaging, selling. And uh, we walk out of the meeting, and Kevin goes, Good job, Sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's a pretty good like, show does Kevin title realize right there, in the meeting that he's sabotaging his own meeting? He know because Kevin will hold on to it's that thing of you can't yell on your way up. Kevin, guys like Kevin because it's a type. I think uh, guys think that you can. They'll take a guy like Letterman and go. Letterman's fucking difficult. He's on the show, on, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna bet though. Letterman wasn't difficult still till he started getting a 1.9 at fucking 12:30. Then he got more difficult, but on his way up, I bet he was just like, hey, great, great to be here. Fucking he was Jay Leno somewhat like meeting the affiliates, all that shit. And then and then eventually you just get like, oh, if I yell for Argentinian food, they'll actually bring it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I bang. Yes. Ex- I like, wanted fucking fish and chips. Yes. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. And then that that's like and then comics go. Yeah, he's a fucking maverick. He doesn't take shit from anybody. He's fucking holding Caulfield and he's fucking out there in the world. And if I don't act like that, I'm a phony. Kevin thinks that like you're a phony if you don't dump your personality at people's feet. And it's like, dude. You, there are people, let's say we're all relatively in the same level of talent. I'd rather have somebody uh, that's not negative next to me. I don't want negative energy. And I yep. had this talk with uh, Patrice as well. Yep. Like, I was doing a pilot, and I wanted Patrice to be in it. Me and Dove Davidoff and Patrice, and, or, and we wanted Patrice to be in it. And so I called Patrice, and I go, are you going to be a dick? And he's like, Neil, nigga, how the fuck are you going to call me, ask me if I can be a dick? You motherfucker, we haven't talked in two years, all this shit. And then we yell at each other. I wish I'd recorded it because it was just two fucking guys that love arguing. <laughs> two hours later, he goes, you know what? I can't promise you I'm not going to be a dick. <laughs> and your brother I want to touch oh. on real quick. All you right, come- you get it. Yeah. <laughs> the moral of the story is, uh, yeah. Rebuttal? Uh, yeah, it's no, the 30 second is, rebuttal. The funny thing is, I mean, Neil might have a point because I remember the first pass of the improv <laughs> at, in the late you know, 80s. I have a point. Uh, the Silver, Silver Saunders Freeman used to come in, you know, she would storm in like at 10 o'clock at night, and I'd be like sitting there trying to get on. You got you to gotta hang out to try to get on. So I'd be sitting there, and, uh, and uh, she would, she, I remember one time she's like, How you doing? I go, I don't know. And I was complaining about my life. She goes, yeah, well, you know, this is like, you know, nobody, nobody really cares. They just want to, it's a business. We're running it. She goes, maybe you should leave this stuff when you, <laughs> and she, she had all kinds of problems, but she was like, maybe you should leave this stuff outside. I was like, all right. But I never, but I, you know, I tried to, I, but I guess I didn't do a very good job. But the funny thing about that, that show was that, um, we we it was a it was a show for the UPN, but um, but we got Ray Romano's 
uh, Ma, uh, Doris, what's her name? Oh, right, the mother. Yeah, Doris. Bo- Doris. Uh, I don't know her name. Anyway, but anyway, got her to play my mom on the show, and I remember, and I was I was staying at a hotel like up the street, but I was like fifth, and I'm never late, but I was annoyed at something, so I was like twenty minutes late to the read through, and fucking Ray Romano's mom was like. You got to be fucking kidding. <laughs> wow. And I did feel like a piece of shit because you were unprofessional. Like, the woman's yeah, been working I mean, she's for like, 40 she's years. Making, she's making 80,000 a week. She's doing fucking somebody a gigantic favor. And then this fucking nothing me comes, comes, you know, comes 20 minutes late. And I was just staying up the street. I wasn't stuck in traffic. So they're all, everybody's right. I'm, but I'm just saying, yeah, I'm, Doris I'm Roberts. Saying, uh, Doris Roberts. I think I'm thinking it's my mom's fault. I'm thinking it's my mom's fault. I think it's like she didn't have enough. She had too many kids, and she didn't. She she didn't have. She didn't have a. She wasn't like a, a very warm person, so she didn't have enough to go around. So I was like, I was broken before the shit even started. Yep. And I'm not. <laughs> Unfo- I'm not good at relationships. Unfortunately, once you reach about 42, you just have to say that that happened, and you're supposed to fix it, and that's what you haven't done. So, uh, sorry. I'll fucking kill you. Wow. Hey, wow. hey, hey got come cathartic. On. Come on, guys. Wait, I'm supposed to fix it? <laughs> fix, now I'm just having fun with it. I'm supposed to no, fix I, it now? I, no, no, I'm just saying. I remember, I, was... that con, I, remember I called Caroline Ray, a, or Caroline Ray called me misogynist before people <laughs> even used that word. Back in like, because I didn't give her a good intro when I brought her up at open at open mic at Boston Comedy in the, or in the early 90s or whatever. No, in the late 80s, because that was... Anyway, so I, I remember I saw her at Stand Up New York one time, like five, after I started doing my podcast, and she's like, she, she's she's like, I was just being a dick, where she goes, you, you're just gonna be, you're, you're just gonna be miserable. <laughs> I'm like, I go, yeah, I can't fix it. Why, why? I said I can't fix it. I'm like, I'm just have, I'm just embracing it. And she's like, she goes like, I thought it's so sick. And I was like, no, you're sick. That you think I should be, that I should try to fix it and be more like you, you fat cunt. So, <laughs> she, so, and your brother, I want to touch on real quick. You come from a real funny family. Danny was a good friend for a while. We just fell out of touch, but I, I really love Danny. I haven't, he, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Is that because of family issues or just yeah. felt just, just oh, family shit? Yeah. Hiya, Danny. Yeah. He's just whatever. And Kevin was doing warm up on Norm's sports show, which inexplicably canceled. So you yeah. can squeeze in more reruns of everything else on your net. Yeah. I need to see a cartoon. Thanks. Yeah. You know why I don't watch cartoons? Because I'm fucking forty. Yeah. I watched cartoons when I was a kid. Right, but Coco. that's not Comedy Central's audience. That's true. You know, it's like. But yeah. Nor- how did Norm? Sh- I'm asking you something. Like, how the fuck should you know? Sorry. I'm like, how did Norm's show not work? Go. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't think it just got big ratings. The other thing, it even I think Kevin anything. told me that. By Norm's admission, you call a show sports show, say goodbye to women. Say goodbye to women. There's just fucking women are not going to watch it. Right. Under any. So there's. You have to hope the saying, host transcends sports. Yeah. You, you have want, to hope it's like the show, Orlando the, Bloom's sports show where they're like, yeah, or I'm what, tuning yeah, in. This or month, just even the second. It's just a fall. liability. <laughs> it's a liability. Like to just fucking have sports in the title. It's like, eh. Tosh. Tosh 1.0. You just go. Yeah, you're, I don't know what the demo is, but it's probably 60, but 40% women, if not I more. Huge you know? woman Giant, demographic. Yeah. And Kevin did warm up on that show, right? Yeah. Kevin's a really great comic. Yeah. I always liked watching him. But the thing with Kevin, the joke I played on Kevin that I stand by to this day, <laughs> I was driving like across country. Now you gotta understand the Brennan clan. It's like the wild whites of West Virginia if it's a super oppressive, quiet, yeah. Villanova Rooting. adjacent. Yeah brooding you know Seething. and every once in a while Kerry Kittles pops out of the neighborhood you've been watching uh, that's one for the, the Freddie Roach show yeah that's great the the him his brother with the stroke is the most Irish shit I've ever seen yeah. I, I've <laughs> ever seen on fucking television when he's in the hospital and he's like hey you know I do the same for you Freddie uh, what Hey, you know, and it's just like, fuck this. They can't say they like it. It's fucking, it's the most Irish shit I've ever seen televised. Yeah, well, I, one anywhere. of them actually says, I love you. And I think Freddie back goes, get your rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's no, like it's just the fucking best. Just some Boston East Coast Irish shit. I'm driving across the country. I stop literally at like, um, just, I don't know, like a Wayne Manor in the middle right. of like northern, northern It California. was in Solvang, I believe. Okay, that makes sense. So Solvang, I pull over at like a place that I know is nice bathrooms. You'd heard that there were people that need to get their balls busted. 
Yeah, I heard. So you were like, wait, did someone eat ball buses? Somebody hey, threw- fucking take out my taser. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow there. <laughs> somebody put up the bat, the big erect cock symbol in the sky. Yeah. So I pull over to this like banquet hall to use the bathroom and I'm, and the Olympics are on. Right. And it's like this crazy volleyball tournament where somehow we're going to beat the Brazilians. Nothing I really give a shit about, but I remember people at the bar in this banquet hall really gave a shit about it. Right. And they turned their drunken buzz to fucking USA. Let's do it. Right. So I'm staring at the television. It's going to be a huge upset. And I see Kevin Brennan in this banquet hall in Solvang, which is in the middle of fucking nowhere, California. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Now, of course, I immediately want to like run into his arms like Apollo Creed and Rocky on the beach. Yeah. But he starts coming to me. So I decide to continue to stare at the TV. He can't believe that I'm there either because he, he's coming from New York. He's yeah. 3,000 miles nowhere. Yeah. I'm 300. He taps me on the shoulder. I look him in the eye and I go, just give me a second. This is almost over. And I look back at the TV and like for years he goes, fucking in the middle of nowhere? You don't even say hi? And I'm like, that was the joke. Like, right. But when you burn so loudly and you're so grating and you're so relentlessly right. asshole, you lose that goodwill of that was fucking funny because I came up to you yeah, in the middle yeah, of Soul exactly. Bang. If you hadn't – Like if Jimmy Kimmel did it to you, you would laugh because Jimmy's just a nice guy. I think – did you do it to Kevin or did Kevin do it to you? You were eating a fucking chicken souvlaki gyro outside on the street in New York, like an open pita thing with meat in the middle. And I think it was you were biting it, and Kevin just shook it, and all the meat came flying out. <laughs> like on the other end, it was fucking, it was fucking hilarious. And that's, Street. As a fucking com- that's what I. That's how I think we're all supposed to act. So I go into offices, <laughs> fucking acting like and you watch old Jerry shake. Lewis stuff, and they yeah. like take scissors out and cut people's ties in half, <laughs> and you go, "Wow, that's over the line." No, that's a fucking. That's yeah, over that's, the line. Yeah, you don't cut a guy's slightly. tie. Yeah, but that's but it's not that far over the line. Or like you they're can always shake throwing the guy's tie, and they're always throwing water in each other's face and <laughs> yeah. shit, and putting like Dean Ashing and George Goebel's drink on the Tonight Show. Like, so I thought I was just extending that. Yeah, like you thought that that's and I took hey your just leave. fall there, Pally. <laughs> yeah, oh, I took your leave. you should just fall in the <laughs> trash there. <laughs> My be- Kevin, uh, Kevin is like a that real- still bothers Kevin. I'm sure Kevin is mad about shit that happened between me and him caddying. He's married in 1988. Uh, yeah. The, um, the Kevin, the best story is Kevin does, like, I can be, I can also be very charming and engaging in showbiz meetings. Like, that's yeah. also part of it. And, uh, and, like, I turn, I figured out how to turn grading into just fucking crowd work in a general meeting and you can fucking get places from, from me like that. You can get to a lot of places. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can go places. Uh, so this is the learning annex, Kevin showbiz were, 101 with Me and Kevin Neil were Brennan. pitching, this is 1999, pitching a show for Kevin. Okay? Okay. So Kevin's sitting in the room, just fucking in the pitch, moping, and I'm fucking turning on the charm and fucking <laughs> see his face. Yeah, just what? moping. What? Yeah, just I don't moping know. Like, I don't want to fucking uh, ask uh, Neil. I don't know. And uh, so you I'm being charming. <laughs> I'm being charming, engaging, selling. And uh, we walk out of the meeting, and Kevin goes, good job, Sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> like, but does Kevin realize in the meeting that he's sabotaging his own meeting? He know, because Kevin will hold on to – it's that thing of you can't yell on your way up. Kevin – guys like Kevin because it's a type, I think. Uh, guys think that you can – they'll take a guy like Letterman and go, Letterman's fucking difficult. He's on the show. Uh, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna bet though. Letterman wasn't difficult still till he started getting a 1.9 at fucking 12:30. Then he got more difficult. But on his way up, I bet he was just like, hey, great, great to be here. Fucking, he was Jay Leno somewhat, like meeting the affiliates, all that shit. And then, and then eventually, you just get like, oh, if I, I yell for Argentinian food, they'll actually bring it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I bang, yes, ex- I like, wanted fucking fish and chips. Yes. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, sorry, Dave. And then that, that's like, and then comics go, yeah, he's a fucking maverick. He doesn't take shit from anybody. He's fucking holding Caulfield and he's fucking out there in the world. And if I don't act like that, I'm a phony. Kevin thinks that like you're a phony if you don't dump your personality at people's feet. And it's like, dude, you, there are people, let's say we're all relatively in the same level of talent. I'd rather have somebody, uh, that's not negative 
next to me. I don't want negative energy. And I had this talk with uh, Patrice as well. Like, I was doing a pilot, and I wanted Patrice to be in it. Me and Dove Davidoff and Patrice, and, or, and we wanted Patrice to be in it. And so I called Patrice, and I go, are you going to be a dick? And he's like, Neil, nigga, how the fuck are you going to call me? Ask me if I can be a dick. Motherfucker, we haven't talked in two years, all this shit. And then we yell at each other. I wish I'd recorded it, because it was just two fucking guys that love arguing. <laughs> two hours later, he goes, you know what? I can't promise you I'm not going to be a dick. <laughs> 